After six million years of boredom, the evolutionary ascent of our species from the last common ancestor with the chimpanzee, something extraordinary happened to us less than 100,000 years ago, which by the way is long after we'd become anatomically modern. It was a kind of emergence into consciousness. We became fully symbolic creatures. Fully symbolic creatures. And we became fully symbolic creatures. Fully symbolic creatures. And this great change has been defined as the single most important step forward in the evolution of human behavior is intimately associated with the emergence of the great and transcendent rock and cave art all around the world. All around the world. Over the last 30 years, researchers have suggested an intriguing and radical possibility, which is that this emergence into consciousness was triggered by our ancestors' encounters with visionary plants. We became fully symbolic creatures. Fully symbolic creatures. We became fully symbolic creatures. Fully symbolic creatures. If you analyze the cave art, there are so many details that make it clear that this was an art of altered states of consciousness, of visions. Plants like the Amanita muscaria mushroom or psilocybin mushroom appear to have been directly connected with this sudden and radical change. And we became fully symbolic creatures. Fully symbolic creatures. And we became fully symbolic creatures. which switches off DMT on contact. But in the Amazon, they've got around this problem. They say it was the spirits that taught them how to do it. Ayahuasca. This is the one. Ayahuasca. We're not doing this for fun. Ayahuasca. This is the one. Ayahuasca. We're not doing this for fun. 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 The DMT in the 
ayahuasca brew was contained in these leaves from a plant that they call chacruna in the Amazon. And there they mix it together with this vine. And out of the 150,000 different species of plants and trees in the Amazon, this is the one that contains a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, which switches off that enzyme in our stomachs and allows the DMT in the leaves when the two are married together and cooked in water to be absorbed orally. It takes us on a, a four hour journey to extraordinary realms. Extraordinary realms. Ayahuasca. This is the one. Ayahuasca. We're not doing this for fun. Ayahuasca. This is the one. Ayahuasca. We're not doing this for fun. Fun, fun, fun. It's uh, no joke to drink ayahuasca. The ayahuasca brew has a foul, foul taste. Really, really hideous. And a dreadful, dreadful smell. And after you've drunk your cup, you'll find within 45 minutes or so that you're sweating, that you're feeling nauseous. Pretty soon you may well be vomiting. Nobody's doing this for recreation. Nobody's doing this for recreation. Nobody's doing this for fun. Ayahuasca. This is the one. Ayahuasca. We're not doing this for fun. Ayahuasca. This is the one. Ayahuasca. We're not doing this for fun. Fun, fun, fun. I'd like to add that I don't think any of the psychedelics should be used for recreation. They have much more serious and important mission with humanity. leading us down the wrong path. And this is perhaps why 
ayahuasca has been fantastically successful in getting people off harmful addictions to hard drugs such as heroin and cocaine. The Jacques Mabit at the Takiwasi Clinic in Peru brings heroin and cocaine addicts out there for a month, gives them 12 ayahuasca sessions. They have encounters with mother ayahuasca during those sessions that lead them not to wish to take heroin or cocaine anymore. More than half leave, completely free of their addiction, never return to it and don't even have withdrawal symptoms. The same incredible healing work was being done in Canada by Dr. Gabor Mate until the Canadian government intervened and stopped his healing practice on the grounds that ayahuasca itself was an illegal drug. Mother Ayahuasca, who is a healer, Mother Ayahuasca, who is a healer, Mother Ayahuasca, who is a healer, Mother Ayahuasca, I was subject to irrational rages. I often made the life of my beloved partner, Santa, a misery. And when I went down from my regular encounter with ayahuasca in October 2011, I was given the most unbelievable kicking by Mother Ayahuasca. For 24 years, 
I was pretty much permanently stoned. Permanently stoned. Permanently stoned. And uh, I enjoyed being stoned. Enjoyed being stoned. Enjoyed being stoned. And I was put through an ordeal. It was a kind of life, life review. review. And it's not an accident that ayahuasca is the vine of the dead. I was shown my death. And I was shown that if I came to death and what awaits us after death, without having corrected the mistakes that I was making in my life, that it would be a very bad thing for me. And actually, Mother Ayahuasca literally took me to hell. And that hell was a little like hell, painted by Hieronymus Bosch, a truly terrible place. And a little like the place that the ancient Egyptians call the Judgment Hall of Osiris. Where our souls are weighed in the scales in the presence of the gods against the feather of truth, of justice. Cosmic. Where our souls are weighed in the scales in the presence of the gods against the feather of truth, of justice. Cosmic. And I was shown that the path I was walking, my abuse of cannabis and the behavior associated with it was going to lead me to be found wanting in the judgment and that I might face annihilation in the world beyond death. So, perhaps not surprising, when I came back to England later in October 2011, I gave up cannabis. I've never smoked it again since then. For 24 years, I was pretty much permanently stoned. Permanently stoned. Permanently stoned. And uh, I enjoyed being stoned. Enjoyed being stoned. Enjoyed being stoned. For 24 years, I was pretty much permanently stoned. Permanently stoned. Permanently stoned. And uh, I enjoyed being stoned. Enjoyed being stoned. Enjoyed being stoned. I'm speaking only personally with no comment on others' the use of cannabis. It's as though a monkey been lifted off my back. I'm liberated in incredible ways. Far from my creativity being inhibited, I find myself writing much more productively, much more creatively, much more focused and much more efficiently as well. And I began to be able to address those negative aspects of my behavior in which cannabis had revealed and hopefully to make myself slowly, it's a long progress, into a more nurturing, more loving, more positive person. And this whole transformation was made possible by this encounter with death that Mother Ayahuasca gave me. That leads me to ask, what is death? Our materialist science reduces everything to matter. Materialist science in the West says that we are just meat, we're just our bodies. So when the brain is dead, that's the end of consciousness. There is no life after death. There is no soul. We just rot and are gone. But actually, many honest scientists should admit that consciousness is the greatest mystery of science, that we don't know exactly how it works. The brain's involved in it in some way, but we're not sure how. Could 
could be that the brain generates consciousness the way a generator makes electricity if you hold to that paradigm, then of course you can't believe in life after death. When the generator's broken, consciousness is gone. But it's equally possible that the relationship is more like the relationship of the TV signal to the TV set. And in that case, when the TV set is broken, of course the TV signal continues. And this is the paradigm of all spiritual traditions. We are immortal souls, temporarily incarnated, these physical forms, to learn and to grow. We are immortal souls, temporarily incarnated, these physical forms, to learn and to grow. inquiries into the mystery of death. The ancient Egyptians weren't just exercising their imagination. They highly valued dream states, and it's now known that they used visionary plants like the hallucinogenic blue water lily. The ancient Egyptian tree of life has recently been identified as the Acacia Nilotica, which contains high quantities of DMT, the same active ingredient that we find in ayahuasca. Now it's difficult to imagine a society more different from the society of ancient Egypt than our society today. We hate visionary states in this society. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise. We have erected huge apparatuses of armed bureaucracies who will invade our privacy, who will break down our doors, who will arrest us, who will send us to prison, sometimes for years, for possessing even small quantities of psilocybin or substances like DMT, whether in its smokable form or in the ayahuasca brew. And yet, ironically, DMT is, we now know, a natural brain hormone. We all have it in our bodies, and it's just that its function remains 
unknown for lack of research. And it's not as though our society is opposed in principle to altered states of consciousness. I mean, billions are being made by the unholy alliance of psychiatrists and big pharma in over-prescribing drugs to control so-called syndromes like depression or attention deficit disorder in teenagers. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was prey. We have a love affair with alcohol. We glorify this most boring of drugs, despite the terrible consequences that it often has. And of course, we love our stimulants. Our tea, our coffee, our energy drinks, our sugar, and huge industries are built around these substances, which are valued because of the way they alter consciousness. But what all these approved altered states of consciousness have in common is that none of them contradict or conflict with the basic state of consciousness valued by our society, which I would call the alert, problem-solving state of consciousness. Which is good for the more mundane aspects of science, it's good for the prosecution of warfare, it's good for commerce, it's good for politics. But I think everybody realizes that the promise of a society over-monopolistically based upon this state of consciousness has proved hollow and that this model is no longer working, that it's broken in every possible sense that a model can be broken, and that urgently we need to find something to replace it. The vast problems of global pollution that have resulted from the single-minded pursuit of profit, the horrors of a nuclear proliferation, the of hunger that millions every night go to bed starving that we can't even solve this problem despite our alert problem-solving state of consciousness. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In our society, if we want to insult somebody, we call them a dreamer. In ancient societies, that was praise. We can't make that decision as a global community. 
We can spend countless billions on warfare, on hatred, on fear, on suspicion, on division, but we can't get together the collective effort to save the lungs of our planet. The message of Ayahuasca is about the sacred, magical, enchanted, infinitely precious nature of life on Earth. 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 The message of Ayahuasca, the universal message, is about the sacred, magical, enchanted, infinitely precious nature of life on Earth. 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 And this is perhaps why shamans from the Amazon are now mounting a kind of reverse missionary activity. When I've asked shamans about the sickness of the West, they say it's quite simple. You guys have severed your connection with spirit. Unless you reconnect with spirit and do so soon, you're going to bring the whole house of cards down around your heads and ours. And rightly or wrongly, they believe that ayahuasca is the remedy for that sickness. And many now are being called to the Amazon to drink ayahuasca. And ayahuasca shamans are traveling throughout the West, offering the brew, often under the radar, often at personal risk, to bring about consciousness change. And it's true that the message of ayahuasca is about the sacred, magical, enchanted, infinitely precious nature of life on Earth. 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 The message of ayahuasca is the universal message is about the sacred, magical, enchanted, infinitely precious nature of life on Earth. 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 spiritual realm, then it's impossible to work with ayahuasca for long without being deeply and profoundly affected by this message. surviving shamanism and what it's all about is a state of consciousness that's designed to help us find balance harmony the ancient egyptians would have called it mart with the universe and to remain mindful that what we're here to undertake on earth while immersed in matter is fundamentally a spiritual journey aimed at the growth and perfection of the soul a journey that may go back to the very origins of what made us human in the first place human in the first place in the first place
invoking the hard-won right of freedom of speech to call for and demand another right to be recognized, and that is the right of adult sovereignty over consciousness. There's a war on consciousness in our society, and if we as adults are not allowed to make sovereign decisions about what to experience with our own consciousness while doing no harm to others, including the decision to use responsibly ancient and sacred visionary plants, then we cannot aim to be free in any way. And it's useless for our society to go around the world imposing our form of democracy on others while we nourish this rot at the heart of society and we do not allow individual freedom over consciousness. It may even be we're denying ourselves the next vital step in our own evolution by allowing this state of affairs to continue and who knows, perhaps our immortal destiny as well. Thank you.